Welcome to Clarinet Chats. My name's Adrian Cox. I'm a professional clarinetist and Van Doren UK artist. In this video series, I'm answering some questions about what gear I use, what clarinets, what mouthpiece, what reeds, what ligatures, things like that. And also going to be talking a bit about uh, my inspirations and how I go about creating solos in the music that I play. Uh, if you do like this video, please make sure you hit subscribe. You can hit the button. I think it's just there. So today's video is all about reeds and about ligatures. Uh, now reed choice, of course, it's a very personal thing. When I started playing, I started on a number one and a half, and then I went up to a two. And when I started having lessons with Jack Gilbert when I was 12, I moved on to a two and a half because that's what he was playing. And I was playing the traditional blue uh, Van Doren. Um, and now I use a three and a half. I use a three and a half Van Doren V12, which is this box here. There's still something very exciting about getting a fresh box of reeds, opening them up, getting them out of a packet. I love it, it makes me very excited. And I'm always excited when my case is full of reeds. Um, also, if you're ever to come around my house, you'll find reeds absolutely everywhere. Um, they're in the table, they're down the side of the sofa, they're in the bed. Um, so that's uh, uh, one of the little pleasures of being a clarinet player that you find, uh, and they're always in your pockets, you don't have to look far and find a reed. Uh, but what do I look for when I get a reed out? So I, I use a three and a half Van Doren V12, as I said. Now when I take out a reed, I look at it, I put my tongue on the front of it. If it feels smooth and soft, I generally think it's going to be a good reed. I think, yeah, this one's going to be good. Um, and I look up to the light with it. I uh, try and get a bit of light behind it. And what I'm looking for is a kind of V um, within the reed. So it going up into a point in the middle. Um, so that it's, you know, so it comes up. So it's thinner on the, on the top and the top edges here and here. Um, and that's what I look for. Somebody told me that once. They said, if you can find that kind of reverse V, that upside down V, um, you'll generally find uh, that, that, that your reed will work. I've never really looked into the mechanics of it. Um, or why that is, but maybe that's something you want to look into yourself, or maybe I should look into it myself anyway. Um, but also there's other things that you can get to help with that. So if I look at that and see that it's not, Van Doren do a fantastic thing called a reed surfacer and a, a reed stick. Now, if you're clumsy like me, uh, these both of these things are made of glass, um, and I tend to drop things and so they crack. So here is the last bit of my reed stick. But the great thing with this is, if I haven't quite got that V going on, I can just I can just shave a slight off one edge and a slate uh, 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 just take a, an edge off another side. Um, and these are great things if you look into how to use them properly. Um, the the resurfacer is a um, is a, a flat piece of glass um, which you can then you can rub the reed on it with two fingers. And the nice thing with that is you get a nice even. even um, it will plane it down nice and even. Now the thing is, I use a three and a half reed, but generally I shave my reeds a little bit. So they probably come up as like 3.3 .3 or 3.4. So one of my suggestions that I would always say is get, I always get a harder reed so you can blow it in. Um, now also people talk about reed rotation. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those people who knows what I do is as soon as I get a read that I like, I just play it until it dies, you know, and then, then I have to go through the whole process again. Um, so that's what I do with regards to reads. But everybody is different, and I know people who can get a massive sound. They get a huge sound out of their clarinet, and they're playing a one and a half or a two, you know, um, but I like a bit of resistance. So when you blow it, you'll feel that you're making that note. And also with the uh, Van Doren 5JB mouthpiece that I spoke about in the last video, um, see, they because that's a big mouthpiece, they recommend using softer reeds. But I like to think that part of my sound and part of my, you know, part of my tone and part of my thing is because I use these stronger reeds on a wider mouthpiece. And I like to feel that I can fill a room. A lot of people say I'm very loud. When I was uh, lucky enough to play at the Barbican with uh, the Jazz at Lincoln Centre, we did the Benny Goodman 80-year uh, um, celebration concert of of that Carnegie Hall concert the famous one and I remember going in there and blowing my first note and the sound man saying you're definitely not allowed to go anywhere near one of my microphones so that's what it is with reads for me I think you find your own personal thing but don't be disheartened if you get a read out and it doesn't work there are things you can do I'm going to put links to Van Doren where you can get the reed surfacer and the reed stick because there's something that you should definitely have in your case so ligatures now, I was someone who was always under the opinion 
that the one with just two pegs that you can screw in you can go into any music shop or any woodwind shop and say have you got any luggages and they give you a basket and there's maybe 30 or 40 in there take your pick 50p each i always said to myself that's fine that's good i get the sound i want that's great i don't need to go trying these fancy things until i came across this the van doren optimum now i was lucky enough to go and try this at the studio in new york um, now the thing with this with the van doren optimum is it comes with three different plates now when you read all about this you think surely that can't do anything now the first plate says that it gives you a more rich colorful sound the second plate is a more compact kind of classical sound and the third plate allows the reed to vibrate um, giving you a big open sound and would you believe it i tried all three plates and i tried the ligature and the one i went for is number three it's that sound that i'm always looking for the bigger open sound you know that's that's my whole thing with playing jazz is trying to get this big massive sound um and so i ended up well i was gifted this one by van doren um and it actually changed uh it changed a lot of things for me uh, it gave me a lot more control and so I think it's worth trying them out. I'm not saying that it will work for you for definite, but for me, after, you know, after 29 years of playing, I suddenly tried a different type of ligature and it, and it changed my playing. It enabled me to, to do a lot more. So don't just put them aside. But then some of my favorite players, people like Evan Christopher, if you talk to him about his ligature and you say, oh, what, why have you got that one? He's got one that's a band. And he said, it looks good in photos. So, and you know, and he's got this massive sound and all this, um, but I, I, I would thoroughly recommend just trying it, just experimenting. You can go into the music shop and you can try these, try the three different plates. Um, and I will, um, I'll, I'll, again, there'll be links to where you can buy this or go and try this, but I certainly recommend trying this out. So there you have it folks, three and a half Van Doren V12s with an optimum ligature using plate number three. And as I said in my previous video, Van Doren 5JB mouthpiece. Go and check it out.